Hi, my name is Peach. Let me not waste your time. Today, I'll be showing you how to create the time blend effect in DaVinci Resolve. Now, if you don't already have a reactor, we're going to be using a tool from that plugin. So, follow this video right here to download the plugin. Otherwise, if you're all set, here we go. I was inspired to make this tutorial after seeing Texture Labs' tutorial on the CC time blend effect, making very nice examples to show how to make this nice, dusty looking effect. And I didn't know if we could do it in DaVinci Resolve until I came across this forum post by Second Man, the admin of We Suck Less, where he's made a loop node that gives us similar controls as a CC time blend effect. So, how does this effect work? It's easy to understand as something close to an echoing animation, but the way it echoes depends on the effects that you put onto it. The way that you set it up is that you create an effect loop by using a loop start and loop end node with your footage merged in between it. Now whatever image is rendered out onto the loop end node will repeat onto the loop start node for the next frame in order to continue the loop. Now with just movement and opacity, you can see the echoing effect. It looks even better with the effects I'm going to show you how to do right now. Alright, so currently I'm in a 24 frames fusion composition. I'm just going to start by adding a background node by the top left over here. In a background node, we can start viewing it and we can add it to our media out over here. And then let's turn the alpha down for this. I'm also going to add a merge node. So I click that over here. And I'm also going to add a text node and add this over here and connect that on the merge. Then I'm going to type in the text that I want. Let's say my name, for example. And then I'm just going to size that up. So something like that will do. And then now we're going to add the time effects. So if you don't already have it installed, you need to go up to workspace, go down to scripts, go down to reactor and then open reactor. This is going to open the program so we can download the correct tools that we need. Once that pops up, go to the search bar and type in loop and then scroll down to you see the loop over here, hit the check mark box on there and it will install the tools. Now you might need to restart your program in order for it to install correctly. But once you do that, come back here. Now we're going to add the loop nodes that we need. So shift space, type in loop and we're going to add loop start and loop end. So let's loop start first, shift end to keep the select tool menu open and then i'm selecting the loop end and shift enter again and then escape and we're going to have these two tools here now i'm going to connect the loop start before the merge one over here just like this and put the loop end over here and now the start and the end are in between the effects that we need so what we need to do first is we need to keyframe the merge so it only shows this text for one frame so click that next frame that again for our blend and then turn this keyframe to zero so on the first frame we have it blend up one and then on the second frame the blend is going to be zero next we're going to add our effects and we're going to first add the turbulent displace if you don't know how to use or understand how to make the turbulent displace i show it in this video right here but i want to make it for you guys right now all right so in order to make the turbulent Slice, we need a fast noise so fn that'll give us a fast noise and shift enter and we need a create bump map node so a cvu we'll bring that up shift enter and then we need a displace so a disp and then go down to displace right there and enter all right now we need to put the yellow input from the merge. So I'm going to hold this and hold down alt, go over the displace and put that on the input and then put the create bump map on the green input of the displace over here. And let's connect this up like that. And then now let's go over our displace settings. So let's go to the fast noise and review that in the, the viewer over here. And let's just crank up the scale like this. We can crank up the detail a bit and then we can go over to the color. And what I like to do is put it on a negative value so you can have warping that goes the other ways and then i'm going to crank this up to one so we can actually see because the alpha does not really matter and all right now we have hover over this you can see the negative values in the viewer all right now let's go back to the noise let's go over to create bump map node and look at that i want to put the clamp normal z up and the height scale all the way up as well and then let's go to the displace so i'll put it to x and y bring this over to zero i'm going to keyframe the x refraction and then go over to the y refraction right click it go down to connect to and then displace and then connect that to the the x refraction right there and then turn the x and y offset all the way down to negative 0.5 and now when i move this it's going to control this place just like this and then we're going to turn up the spread it to three just like that and all right now it's looking pretty good now it's on the wrong warp way so we need to flip the channels from red over here to green and then from green over here to red so now it's going to give us this nice little rotation warp as you can see in the viewer like that all right and now i'm going to just get a keyframe this from a value of zero and i'm just going to bring this up let's go to say 18 and let's do like a negative 0.05 that will work let's open the spline viewer to make sure it's all correct so let's just check our displace and then highlight both these keyframes so control a and then bring this down like this and so we have a graph that's looking like this so it's going to displace this really fast but it's going to start out normal because we don't want it to displace right away all right and actually we need to go to the fast noise over here and go to the seethe because okay, we actually can't turn up the seethe rate but we're going to keyframe the seethe either up or we can also just make an expression on it so that's what i'm going to do so double click the seethe hit the equal sign 
to make an expression and this will pop up with this expression bar and I'm just going to type in time divided by 30 and that's what I think is the best one to do. I'll make sure you're not in full caps. You need to make sure that your notation is right and there we go and now if we look at the noise it's going to seethe just like that and then now we have our displace that will do that. All right next thing we need to do is actually before the displace it's going to be adding a mat control. So shift space mat control and this is going to mask out certain parts of the footage in order to have our smoke disperse. So we need to add that and we need to add another fast noise and I might as well just copy this fast noise I have over here copy and paste and then I'm going to connect this to the garbage mat of the mat control so hold down alt over the mat control you can do the garbage mat and that should be working and let's go to the fast noise and I don't want any negative values on this one so I'm gonna go over to the color and put this down to zero just like that and might as well put that to zero as well now I'm going to up the contrast on this so there's less less values that are in between and then I want to lower the brightness so we have a little bit less white value and if you can really want more control over this I can go over to gradient let's flip this off and then we can lower the offset just like this and I think I'm going to bring the de detail down so it's a little bit more simplified in the shapes and let's bring it back a little bit bring back more of this offset like that all right that should be good and should be seething just like that I might make it even faster so let's bring this down to maybe like a 10 and that should be good, maybe maybe 20. All right, that looks good to me. And the secret to this is that what we need to do is be on the mat control. When you go up to settings and go to the blend, keep in the blend and the next frame, we're going to keep it again. I want to put it at 0.25 and actually at the beginning we want zero so it doesn't affect it at all. So the first frame is going to be affecting nothing and then the next frame and beyond, it's going to start taking away the mask uh, by 25% every single time. And let's make sure our mat control is correct on the garbage mat. It should be on the correct settings. This is what I put, put invert and make sure it's on alpha on the garbage mat settings over here. Last thing we need is a little bit of a transform. So I'm going to select this displace over here and then I'm going to hit this control that adds a transform node. Let's bring this over here and then we could up this by a 0.1 so it's going to slightly move outwards when it goes through the loop. Now in the tutorial by Texture Labs he actually adds a road dilate effect as well but when I was testing it out didn't really create a displace that I liked so I'm not going to add it here but if you would like to add it just add a road dilate node after there and then probably just the value so it extends every single time for every single loop. So now that should be done. I need to go to my loop end and make sure that it can knows where the loop start is. So I'm going to bring this loop start into that loop start menu over there. Then I need to go to my cache folder and choose where I want this rendered out sequence to be. Let's go to browse and I'm just going to make another folder where I have my other renders for this effect like that. All right, it's going to be there. And then let's set this to the value that we need. So it's going to be 24 frames and we need rendering out and then select the loop end and let's run the loop. See how it goes. All right, that should be our effect done pretty well. Now, if you want even more details or say you want this noise to be bigger, so it's masking out a little bit more, you can just increase the scale and then you can go and run the loop again. But every single time you make a change, you have to go and run the loop again to make sure you have everything well. So I like how this looks right here. And if you want to use footage, this is where you would switch out the text for some footage. And then that will make that nice poofy effect for the footage that you can see over here. But I want to show you how to make this time blend, which is it shows fully here. And then it's going to slowly mask away and then start applying the effects just like that all right let's go over here and go back to our composition all right the way that we need to do this is we're going to add a mask so let's add a rectangle mask and let's connect this to the merge one on the merge one let's actually create a different version so we'll click the squares up here different version and then click this two and then we're going to get rid of this blend because we're not going to need this blend because the mask is going to do that blending for us all right so let's view the rectangle so you can see it in our viewer just like this and i'm going to increase the height and then put our width to about 0.25 and that should be fine and i'm just going to have it do a swipe over just like that so i'm going to keyframe the center so at the beginning let's move this over here off screen keyframe and let's go to say like about a nine or eleven frames let's go to a nine frames over here and then bring this across just like that and that should do well and let's adjust the spline so we have something nice so if you don't see this go over to the three dots and go to show selected tool only and you can only see your keyframes that we have for this tool i'm going to highlight these by hit, hit selecting a and hit s on my keyboard and i'm going to hit control t and hit a control a again and then control F to fit this in the viewer. And with the control T, I'm able to adjust the curves just like this. It has a nice little S graph like this. I don't want to make it too steep, but I want to make it a little bit smoother than what we had before. I want to make sure that, that this white bar hits every single section of the frame. It doesn't matter what frame, but I think there's a gap right here. So let's put a mouse here. Yeah, there's a gap right here where it won't capture this section of the frame. So I'm just going to bring this back just a little bit just like this. And then now we can see that if we put our mouse here, it still does not capture it. So let's, let's smooth this out a little bit more so it goes a little slower. 
and let's see bam covered let's see is this part covered this part is covered is this part covered it is covered and yeah so everything should be covered and it actually almost overlaps with the previous one so we don't want too much overlap and we don't want too much missing gaps or they won't show up so something like this hopefully will do the trick all right so now let's play this animation and run this through let's run this through oh okay sometimes when you go to another composition that has another loop in it then when you click loop here for some reason it still has the other node selected even if you go back and deselect it it doesn't work like that so i'm just going to restart real quick and then let's go back and render this out now if you do come to this problem where you can't run the loop you don't actually have to shut down but you can just replace this loop end node with another loop end node but you have to replace all the settings that you had there before so make sure you replace the loop start cache folder and the amount of frames your render needs to be all right all right we are back we're in our composition let's select this loop end and then run the loop all right, that did pretty well. As you can see, certain parts where it overlapped, it did the part twice. That's not what we really want, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it there. It wouldn't be that noticeable because it only lasts for two frames, but that is up to you if you want to change that. All right, so now I'm going to add the text so we can see it actually go from solid to nothing. All right, so let's take this rectangle. I wanna control C and then I'm gonna go over here and control shift V to paste an instance of this node. So all the controls from this node are connected to this node and we can control whatever we want from it and it will adjust from both ways. And what I'm actually going to do is e instance some of the controls that are here and so it won't be affected by this other previous node so i'm going to de instance the soft edge de instance the border width and then de instance the width as well all right so this is going to be our mask for our text over here so i'm just going to bring over a map control shift space map control just like this and then connect this text to the input of the map control and then the input of the mask here to the garbage mat over here just like that but the problem is here now we play back it's only flashing this part of the text we want it to stay and reveal all the text so what we need to do is create a transform node bring this down over here and let's connect this to the input of the transform so alt hold down alt and then select input and put this in the garbage mat again and then what we need to do is on our instance we need to go to the width and say let's add another number to it so let's put one over there so now that whole thing is one but now it starts and ends at a part that we don't need so well, how do we fix this so i'm just going to scoot this over with our transform node i'm just going to do say half of what we added to this so we added one so we need to subtract this by a negative 0.5 and then now it, everything it should be working just like that and so now if we merge these two together so let's add a merge node put this over here and add this on top smoke and let's play this back you can see that we have something like this we actually need to invert the amount on the mat control the garbage mat mat invert and now solid to nothing and you can see there's a little bit of a line so we need to adjust what we de instance earlier which is our soft edge so soft edge that or increase the border width so or decrease it so it affects the range a little differently but something like that will work and now the edge is not as noticeable all right and let's put this on our media out and then it's going to be our full effect just like that here's our final effect that we made and here it is with the erode dilate if you're interested in doing it with that either way it works well all right all right so how does this effect actually work we already went over the loop nodes but here with the text the text is being masked out with this rectangle and it's only showing a certain part of the text at a certain time and each time it does that it puts that part of the text through the time blend loop so it can go and do the effects that it needs to do now with the fast noise and the map control fast noise is creating a map so we could mask out our footage and we put our settings to 0.25 this blend so it's only taking 0.25 percent of the image at a time and so it's going to take a while for it to go away but it does eventually after multiple frames and iterations through the loops next we have the displace we have a displace keyframe here where it starts from zero so it starts acts normal and it goes and ramps up to our value over here which is displacing it a lot giving us that wobbly texture that we need and then last we have our transform node which is slowly expanding our image so it's moving outwards towards the end of the frame then down here we're using the same mass that we use with the rectangle but it's just bigger and offset it over so we can reveal an actual copy of this text with this map control to have our reveal animation and then we just merge those two together and it gives us our final animation just like that if you're interested in other cool effects click this transition ideas video you can see what is possible to do in DaVinci Resolve. Otherwise, subscribe and have a good day.